full set, then a kind of a, a separate set of colors in relationship to a kind of a sparkle, sparkle of gems, and a whole bunch of gems, that's the jasper, emeralds.
So Michelson and Morty, I mean, they were really uh, way off, weren't they, looking for the ether the way they were? Yeah, they got the wrong idea. They had a completely wrong idea. Yeah. He's playing with this analogy very strictly. Trust as, trust as. So it's important, therefore, that we uh, quickly go through it. And then let me suggest we do something unusual. Because, you know, it's so cut and dry and keep it normal and unusual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> To do this, to do this right, I would say the right way to do it is to first have everything mapped out, all the relationships mapped out, just map it all out, and then you can see what he's doing. Okay, if we read. itself is pure and is situated in a pure heaven in which the stars are. The heaven, which those who discourse about such matters call the ether, the water, mist, and air are the sediments of this and flow together into the hollows of the earth. So we have one identity, whatever he means by heaven, ether. And great, that's what we got first for our work. Now, we do not perceive that we live in the hollows, but think we live on the upper surface of the earth, all right? Most clearly an analogy, right? Just as if someone who lives in the depth of the ocean should think he lived on the surface of the sea, seeing the sun and the stars through the water should, should think the sea was the sky. 
right, because right, what are right, closest to the air would have that impression. Right? You would therefore think, ah, oh, that's it. That's what it is. That's what it is. But it would be filtered, wouldn't it? Because right. that's what it is. So, the fish or people who live in the water see the sun, sun the stars through the water, and they think what they're seeing is the sky. Right. And the condition they're in, the same term is going to be used up here, sluggish. Right. Sluggish. Right. And uh, feeble. That's a theme that uh, repeats itself four times. Never, right, they've never reached the surface of the sea and should never have seen by rising and lifting his head out of the sea into the upper world and should never have heard from anyone who had seen how much purer and more beautiful it is than the world he lived in. So he would say, right, that fish taking a look would say, wow, all right, all right. It's far more beautiful than I ever imagined was to have. Far more beautiful. <clears throat> Could you describe that point? What's this? Where he has his. No, no, no. What's this? I'm sorry. And? No, no. What's this figure? The fish out of the water? <sighs> Thank you. Right, right, right. And this one? Ian. Right, right. If he ever got out of his sluggish and feeble state and were to poke out of it, would he not then see something he wasn't able to see before? True, true. Something wonderful and awesome. I was right. right. That was the way he describes it. Beautiful. Much purer and more beautiful than the world he lived in. Agree? Yes. There. There and more here. Agreed. Okay, what do you want to explain? The name of what happened at that instant. What happened in that instant? He popped the head out? He got smart. Took a look. That's getting smart. It's in Greek, they call it smart <laughs> <laughs> Uh No, what do you mean? Is it, an, is it an example of enlightenment, or is well, enlightenment higher up? No, 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 no. See, he's saying, we are just like this guy. Now he has to do the same thing up here, doesn't he? Oh, the analogy. Right, he's working on a four-part analogy. So, we'll call, going up, all right? This is A. This is B. This is C. He looks like an ant and a frog. And here, what's he doing here? Um, looks like he's being in light. He popped up. Just like, okay. Right? Okay, so it's, it's the, the same leap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have A is to B is C is to D. It's a higher level of the right. same leap. Now I believe this is just the case with us. <laughs> For we dwell in the hollow of the earth and think we dwell on its upper surface. And the air we call the heaven and think that is the heaven in which the stars move. But the fact is the same. Right? The fact is the same. Right? Right. The fact is the same. That we too, if we got over our sluggish and feeble state, would see something that fast and that vastly different and more significant. The fact is the same. That by reason of feebleness and sluggishness, same thing, we are unable to attain to the upper surface of the air. For if anyone should come to the top of the air, or should get wings and fly up, he could lift his head above it and see. As, so you see, as, same analogy, working himself out, as fishes lift their heads out of the water and see the things in our world. So, other part of the analogy, so he would see things in the in that upper world. So he would see things in this upper world, which would be heaven. And 
right? Now, this is the positive side of the negative, right? Sluggish and feeble, sluggish and feeble, not the positive side of it. Isn't this a further development? As fishes lift their heads out of the water and see the things in our world, so he would see things in the upper world. And if his nature is strong enough to bear the sight, right? It's not enough, yeah. right? It's not enough to take a. This is just taking a peek, right? This is a fish who just let's call this a flying fish. <laughs> flying fish can show, right? <laughs> <laughs> because it's episodic. It's just a. It's a brief one. It's just jumping out. Whereas, look now. This is enduring it. So he would see the he would see things in the upper world, and if his nature was strong enough to bear the sight, right, what do you have to do? So therefore, this takes right, it's a progression going up. Has to bear strength, strength, right? Grow, grow, right? Become strengthened. He needs strength. So what do we call this? D two and nurture. Some of the Nancy Churches. Huh? Yeah, I have fun. When Alia is very tired, she runs over and nips on her mother's breast, and two minutes later, she's <coughs> dashing around the house as if she had slept for three hours, so I call it Nancy's Churches. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell her we can make a lot of money. You know, super fuel. Super fuel. Yeah. Super fuel, you know? super fuel. Right. Alfin and I, we can make money. I know yeah. just the ad. I know the bottle. We look like everything. <laughs> she has absolutely no interest in making money. Well, you know, some of the best ideas fall along the wayside. Like those dairy stores on the corner, you know, she could just sit inside behind a screen, just <laughs> walk up. I don't blame her. I would toss it out. That's real move. <laughs> okay, so what he encounters, right? What he encounters, right? What he encounters is the real heaven. Right. Real life. Real life. Why would it take strength to see something by far more beautiful than the show that you Why would it take This has one hell of an impact on the nervous system. That's why you sit when you do that, isn't it? <laughs> For some of the studies, right? So you don't have so far to fall. Okay, now he's going to describe what he calls now the real earth. Right? This is the real heaven, the real life, the real earth, one seen from here. Agreed? That's the goal. So now, he has some interesting contrasts that I'm going to skip. <clears throat> right where he talks about model copy and reason I'm making it. Right? So therefore, in the next paragraph, well then, my friends, begin with the earth when seen from above is said to look like those balls that are covered with 12 pieces of leather. It's divided into patches of various colors of which the colors, which we see here, may be regarded as samples, such as painters use. But there, the 
whole earth is of such colors, and they are much brighter and purer than ours. For one part, purple, wonderful beauty. One is golden, one is white, whiter than shellac or stone. And the earth is made up of the other colors likewise. And they are more in number and more beautiful than those we see here. For those very hollows of the earth, which are full of water and air, we call the sediment before, present an appearance of color as they glisten amid the variety of other colors. So look at, you know, looking at looking all at the corruption from that point, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look bad. What, looking what here? Looking at the what? The corruption? Yeah. So he's there, and he's doing two things. Not only, not only able to look at that, he's now able to look at this. Hmm. And this has an appearance. Hmm. It presents an appearance of color. Right. You can see the two copy. Then. As they glisten amid the variety of other colors, so that the whole produces one continuous effect of the row. And in fact, a highly prized stones, sards, and jaspers, and emeralds, and other gems, and fragments of those there. But there, everything's like this. Thieves are still more good. Okay, now, how do you go for something like that? <laughs> this is where I think comparative philosophy pays off. That's where comparative philosophy pays off. If this is if this is a vision, if this is a vision he has, which is consistent with the rest of the Phaedo, because he says in the Phaedo in the clearest possible language that he has been a mystic his whole life and he's done everything in his life to try to be one and he's up and uh, he's avoided nothing that could have achieved that goal. So this is a mystic trip. This is a mystic vision. This is a beatific vision. So what we need to do, if we could do it, why don't we send Gina? She's finished with that study. She's been going. Oh, good. Well, she, she's a red kid. Hasn't she? She's finished with all the work. Doesn't do much anymore. OK. Why don't you run down all the autobiographies of mystics? All right. And let's see whether we can find any correlation in the way in which they describe their interior experiences to see whether we can use it to throw any light on the subject. Couldn't we do that with the William James book? Yeah. Varieties of religious mm -hmm. experience? Mm -hmm. So, play of consciousness. Yeah, that's one of them. This is the great one. This is really, this is not one of the greatest. Play on consciousness? Yeah, yeah. not the numbers. Now, in it, these are his these are his key states, interior states. Red, white, black, blue, purple, golden. And the language he uses, by the way, is cloth and patterns. Fabric, he uses that image of the law. Plato is using leather patches. So since we have nothing else to do. Why don't I read that? Oh, All right? And see what, see what we can do. Now, why is that important? Because remember what he says towards the end of this, that this whole thing, this whole journey, uh, on page one, number 114D, now, it would not be fitting for a man of sense to maintain that all this is just as I have described it, but that this or something like it is true concerning our souls and their abodes. Right. So this is an account of the psyche of men and the different places the psyche has it were visits. So, yes? Absolutely. Let me get it on. Oh, I know the one. 
He is a tantra. He, he's into tantra. One eighty-two. One eighty-two. start going back into a previous state of meditation. And it comes on you know, without he does meditate for like there are waves, you know, he rides it sometimes in the trough and sometimes the you know. Okay. My meditation was again as it had been earlier. From within Bhagavad Nityanda seemed to shake me and then the rays of the red aura lit up the 72,000 natives and all the particles of water. Immediately afterwards, the white flame stood before me, followed by her support, black light. And finally, my beloved blue, blue pearl, the great ground of all. With the blue pearl, my meditation immediately became more intense. My gaze turned upwards. The blue bindu, or spot, of my two eyes became so powerful that it drew out the blue person hidden within the Rana Andhra, in the middle of the upper Shasasura, the top of the head, and placed him before me. As I gazed at the tiny blue pearl, I saw it expand, spreading its radiance in all directions, so that the whole sky and earth were illuminated by it. It was now no longer a pearl but had become shining, blazing, infinite light. This is the divine light of Chitty. The light pre pervaded everywhere in the form of the universe. I saw the earth being born and expanding from the light of consciousness, just as one can see smoke rising from the fire. I could actually see the world within this conscious light and the light within the world, like the threads and a piece of cloth, and a cloth in the threads. Mm. Just as a seed becomes a tree with branches, leaves, flowers, fruit, so within her own being, Chitty, the divine light, lays on becomes animals, birds, germs, insects, gods, demons, men, <coughs> women. I could see this, this, this radiance of consciousness, resplendent and utterly beautiful, silently pulsating, a supreme ecstasy within me, outside me, above me, below me. I was meditating even though my eyes were open. Just as a man is completely submerged in water can look around and say, I'm in the middle of the water. I'm surrounded on all sides by the water. There's nothing else. So I was completely surrounded by the light of consciousness. In this condition, the phenomenal world vanished in <coughs> pure radiance. Just as one can, uh, can see the infinite rays of the sun, shimmering in all directions. So the blue light now is sending out countless rays of divine radiance all about me.
He talks about a uh, Siddha Loka. Now, Loka is Sanskrit for place. Siddha is, a, is both a person who, who is seeking life and, and a way of seeing plays like her role. Oh, really? That she used to play the month Where does he have? Is he just what goes around with him? Yeah. He's not. Well, he'll probably be up there, isn't he? Yeah, I suspect so. I thought maybe we could get him over here. Yeah, he sent that paper down. Plago and, uh, and the previous right here. Vedanta. Mm -hmm. Do you have an extra choice? I don't know where it is. I don't know. Peter. I don't know. Yeah, he was oh. the fun guy, right? No, he wasn't good. He wasn't a tall guy. No, that's Mahesh. That's Mahesh. Yeah, that's Mahesh. He was short. And he used to cook, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Out of the kitchen. Yeah. He was fun too. He was fun. Yeah. He was fun. Yeah. He was fun too. Mm -hmm. I was sitting. Suddenly, a red aura, thousands of sparks, as if from an exploded star, twinkled. By the light, I could see within me all my nerves, my entire excretory system, my gallbladder, all my internal organs. Inside the red aura, I then saw a beautiful light moving with incredible speed. It was a part of my Sadhguru's power of grace. As I watched, the red aura disappeared and was followed by the fun side white flame, which shone with a new and ever increasing luster. And the black light appeared inside the white light, also shining more brightly. And finally, there came the blue pearl, streaming the rays of a new radiance. The pearl was still blue, much brighter than before. Its brilliance was increasing every day. My mind became absorbed in this tremendous radiance. And with this absorption, a very high state of light began to fall out. It was all pervasive. As the rays of blue light spread throughout all the nadis, the nerves, like the light, it moved in waves and eddies and jumped and played in the nerves. I felt its vibrations in my sense of waves of light, waves of ecstasy spreading. This is what I call the Tantra Loka. So, for each one of these colors, there's a corresponding psychic state. For each one, it's a corresponding sense. Now, uh, so that what we need to do, you see, is to see whether the, the promise is this work can be understood in terms of the soul and in what it abides, or it's abiding. Now, abiding is places where it's at. Therefore, if he describes, as he did just a short while ago, all of these colors, and that's what's encountered from this point, then that's what's experienced, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Those are places that you've been experiences, because those are the places. Uh, let me get one more. There's one I really like. If I can remember what it was. The trouble of marking up the text. Right. Becomes your signpost. Yeah. Yeah. One oh eight or ninety one? The man who goes through all cities. 
That's a familiar place. Spontaneous yoga movements. <laughs> and sexual excitement. That's when he had that fantastic erection. That's where you <laughs> walked around with a hard on for three days. Yeah, I couldn't wear a long coat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's doing pretty well. <laughs> Go ahead, Sandy. Your words are captured on tape. <laughs> you got it. So Get the camera on Sandy. Lance is lovely. Only Rhonda heard, and she's not really sure what I said. I'm just going to let it pass. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Department of the University, so I have to have cultural and geography, you know, psychogeography. Yeah, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of people ask that. Hey, where are you at? Man? Where are you at? I'm in the blue. <coughs> I'm in the blue. <laughs> but I'm dancing with the blue pearl. <laughs> began to see that he, through whose grace mine it becomes known as an attestation of the Lord, is myself appearing as the blue pearl. I began to see that the blue one, whose light <laughs> spreads through the whole world, that the one from whom I received knowledge, who is the pure transcendent witness of all, the unchanging being, and changing truth in my inner self. What page up here? One seven. I became firmly established in the inner knowledge that just as the sun is visible, yet cannot be seen by the blind, in the same way, even though the blue of consciousness, the witness of all, is apparent, it cannot be seen without the grace of the guru. But a cloud cannot obscure the sun forever. He reveals himself. <coughs> For a moment, and hides himself for a moment, yet is revealed even when hidden. That's myself. I began to believe that he who takes care of my yogic sadhana, who is known to our ancestors, and who will be known to those who are to come, and by whose grace our attachment to the world disappears, was my being, my mind and consciousness, my bliss. A firm and steadfast belief arose within me that the blue one, who makes light shine, and shines also in inert matter, without knowledge, 
of whom all knowledge is incomplete, and with whose knowledge all things are easily known, was the form of the grace of my teacher, Sri Guru Nanak. The great Kundalini continually deepened my meditation of my knowledge of the Absolute. So the whole thing, it's a, it's a journey into uh, different psychic states, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. I can get to one. One time, always. It's going to be considerable. It's going to be considerable. Let me just step along on my It's going to be, it's going to be especially since it's not my book. Yeah. <laughs> so look. Okay, so now this is where we're at. All right. We could get quite a few of these words. This is one. We get a whole bunch of them. And if they're saying similar things and we can identify similar kinds of states, then we could say, hey, this is a geography of the psyche, as Rod mentioned. And if so, then we can say, ah, knowing that, we don't have to approach this as strangers. <coughs> we could fill it in. And obviously, the best source is uh, Woodruff's Kundalini Yoga, certain Bob. Ah, sometimes it's fun. Which is available on paperback. It's now available on paperback. Best intro. Yeah, Dover picked it up. But that's a remarkable book. Another book Yeah, I've got one. There's a little tiny one. A little time? Yeah, Woodward. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, Woodward. Yeah, Woodward's not tiny. Well, he has a bunch of little ones, too. Yeah, yeah, I know, that whole series, but that, that certain <coughs> power, that's pretty thick. No, that's right? thick. I loaned a barber for a while. Remember that little book? Oh, Ch Chaudhry's? No, that's why I found a used bookstore. Hard House Chaudhry's? Hard Facts. You loaned it to me the Hard Facts. Yeah. Oh. Gray book? Yeah. No, no, this is yes. a brown one. <laughs> yes. I do remember. Yeah, is that any good? Oh, I didn't know. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. It smelled good. It just, you know. They have it still there? And you go on Ontario when you buy books and you have to draw and you yeah. be discriminating. <laughs> well, no, you know, it's just loaded with, it wasn't, you know, it was just all quote, you know, the whole thing was pulling all out of the tradition and building it. Different yogas, different chakras. All that system we talked about as this is life in terms of different canals and paths. And See, that's what practices for arousing. Yeah. Yeah, so he's got um, states experienced at different knots or chakras. The geometry of the posture. Yeah, if we can work it out, he's got a, he's got a map. And, um, <coughs> Might be easier to go this one with our way. Now, what's the effect of all of those? That's what we want to know. The earth there is adorned with all these jewels, <coughs> also with gold, silver, and everything of that sort. But here they're there in birth. For there, they're in plain sight, abundant, large in many places, so that the earth is a sight to make those blessed to look upon it. Therefore, this very act, right, makes them blessed. paragraph a little bit for structure. <clears throat> now there are many animals upon it, one, and men, some dwelling inland, 
others on the coasts of the air as we dwell about the sea on the coasts of air as we dwell about the sea <coughs> and others on islands which the air blows around near the mainland so he's got a geography Here's his conclusion. And in short, what water and the sea are in our lives, air is to theirs, and what the air is to us, ether is to them. That's our structure. So building structure. Right. So he's got a He's got a kind of a, he's got a geography, doesn't he? And here he has an area that's inland. <coughs> and then he has islands in the air. He's got a whole, he has a whole geography. But he doesn't fill that in. It's, it's not completed. The geography is there, but what it relates to. This part he doesn't do. But he gives us an analogy so that if we get any part of it, we can fill in all the others. Look at what water and sea are in our life. Right. See, notice the structure. What water and air are in our lives. So, all right, we have an analogy. Ether is, right? What water and sea are in our lives, air is in theirs. So air is like sea. Yeah, that's right. All right. Air is to theirs, and what air is to us, right, same structure. <coughs> and what? Yeah. Air is to us, all right, same structure, ether is to them. Well, air is pretty important. All right, so look here, A. Air and water, water and, sea. Right, water and air is, are to our lives, so air is to them. Because we're talking about another another set of relations here, right? Some people living inland, and then there's islands that sit around the air. So we have water and air is to men among us. As right, air air is to those living inland, right, is to uh, ether, right, heaven is to God. Right, that's a six-part analogy. Isn't the first part water and sea? Yes, it is. Yes, water and sea. Excuse me. Absolutely right. <laughs> it's all the fallout. Yeah, thank you. All right, now. Now he's got all kinds of, you see, he has all kinds of relationships that are then described in this set. But this is the mean term. He doesn't, he doesn't do anything with them. It takes the extremes. All right, now. 
we can now transform this into something that will work for us. like this is. See, we have one here. We have one here. So, if you wanted to take the earlier summary, we could say, as, as the water is deficient, <laughs> right? If you want to make it in terms. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back now. Hey, what would you say? How is water and sea to us? What are the ways these terms are used? In what context, in what images are they employed? And obviously then, you can get to the question, for what purpose? Now, if it's possible that we can get a geography for one, what can we do? Establish the relationship and move them Establish the relationship and then push it for the two sets of terms. Two sets, not terms. Right? Now, I must tell you the parts of this I, I am not sure about, but I can I'm tell you what I've done. Um, now, I'm going to skip now these intermeaning places. But you could fill them in. You could fill them in right on this page, wherever you see them that I want to work with just on that first set of relationships that I have there on the board. Such is the nature of the earth as a whole and of the things around it. But round about the whole earth, I'm just in the next paragraph, in the hollows of it are many regions, some deeper and wider than that in which we live, some deeper, but with a narrower opening than ours, and some also less in depth and wider. Now, all of these are connected one another by means of subterranean channels, some larger, some smaller, but bored in all of them. And there are passages through which water flows from one to another, as into mixing bowls. And there are everlasting rivers of each side of the earth flowing with hot and cold water, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to get our terms, aren't we? And right, and mud, right, and mist. We're going to get all of them. So, we're going to get a geography. <coughs> we're going to get a kind of geography that's going to cover this. But look here, right? now that we know where to go, and that's the four rivers, and their interconnections, He does that, right. he does that with great skill from 111D,
until he finishes his geography, which is at 112E. Just as in this region, in this region, what we're talking about what's seen here, there are all kinds of beings <coughs> described in this world, from this viewpoint, so too from this we get something similar. In other words, it's very tight parallel. Um, okay, what does that generate? They make seas, marshes, rivers, springs. Right? That's what all this wonderful stuff maps. They're passageways, right? They're all, they're all dynamic. Right? That's what they meant. They go all around and under the earth, sometimes from here and sometimes sitting there. Um, Sure. Sure, I don't know what to do with it. Okay. It's lost. All right, the four rivers in the regions. That, that it made right. a condition of some. No, no, no. Okay. Let's say then, all right, now. The four rivers then and the description of them goes to 112b. Then he's going to describe the regions themselves through which the rivers flow. That goes on. And 13d. Now, for what purpose are they used? And what did, how does he employ them? Possible range of activities, maybe. That's right. So, you know, right. Remember, this is this is the cause of all the corruption. Mm -hmm. right. So, therefore, these what we get here, the use to which it's put is the grounds for uh, two things. The condition for your afterlife, what you experience, what you understand, and your trip back. So that's what we get here. As a function of your nurture and education? Mm -hmm. as for, that's what you carry with you. Mm -hmm. That's what you carry with you. So as, as you carry with you as you carry with you your paideia, your education and nurture, So, with a guide or without a guide, so you experience the, this geography. And he has a progression. Right. He has Tartarus. Right. He has an extreme. Two parts in Tartarus, the incurable, the curable, Now, 
if you take it from this, you can see that there's a whole geography of the four rivers. If you follow those that are curable, these stay in Tartarus and you can make a map of Tartarus. Um, let me see if I can. The other string. These are these are those who neither do good nor evil. But he says, live neither well nor ill. Neither lived well. What some call it, I want to write it. It's the respectable dead. Respectable dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 right in that club. <laughs> so, for enough. Yeah. Um, so, we can trace it. We can trace it. The dead have come to the place where each is led by his genus, or genus, or God. First, they are judged and sentenced as they have lived well, piously or not. And those who are found to have lived neither well nor ill go to Achiro. Achiro. And embarking upon vessels provided for them, they arrive at the, in them at the lake. There they dwell, purified. And if they've done any wrong, they're absolved by paying the penalty. But they're wrong. If they've done anything good, they receive rewards each according to their merits. That's a real neutral zone, isn't it? Yeah, it's a neutral zone. Right. Yeah. It's not an extreme, then, is it? No, no, no. Well, yes, it is an extreme in respect to what's under the earth. What's under the earth, I yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, see, <coughs> that's why I'm saying. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like, that's our job. It's like gray. Yeah. Or something. See, that's our job. Yeah. From this. That's our job. See, like what he's going to do, he's going to give us all the dynamics underneath for this. And he's going to talk about rivers, and he's going to talk of sweeping them away, and they, they're in the different regions. Well, we already know what kind, what's up here. These are people, people living in the air and will be in currents of air, currents of air, currents of water, and by an implication. I see. Deeply. Being swept along. Okay. Hmm. Michelson Morley did the ether experiment in the wrong place. <laughs> but those who appear, now he takes the other extreme, right? But those who appear incurable and kind of the greatness of their own deeds, because they have committed many great deeds of sacrilege, wicked, abominable murders, or any other such crimes, are cast by their fitting destiny into Tartarus. Right. So that from that, there it is. That's it. Casting the card. Zoom. That's the end. <laughs> Those who are, however, who are curable, but are found to have committed great, committed great sins, <coughs> in a moment of passion. And in a moment's passion, have done some act of violence against father and mother, and uh, lived in repentance the rest of their lives, or have slain some other person with similar conditions. These needs must be thrown into Tartarus. And they've been there for a year. The wave cast them out. Right. Say the language on the wave cast them out. And now, here's a journey. We can follow the journey. Right so, both the curable and incurable are thrown in, yeah. and only the curable come out. Right. Now, would they take a trip? All right. Now, in other words, you can map it from here. 
And when they have been there for a year, way to cast them out. The homicides by way of cocktails. Those who have been outraged by their parents by way of uh, pride like a thong. Pride like a thong. Right? Two ways. Right? So you can make a map from this point on. Right? Two rivers. And when they have brought, when they have been brought by the current to the uh, Artrusian Lake, they shout and cry out, calling you know, to those that they have slain or outraged and begging, beseeching them to be gracious and to be let them, to let them come into the lake. And if they prevail, they come out and cease from their ills. And if then they come in that lake, then they can be reborn, because that's the basis for rebirth. If not, they're born again and again. Yeah. Right, but those who have been found to have excelled in all the living are freed from those regions within the earth and are released as from prison. They mount efforts to the pure dove abode and dwell upon the earth. <coughs> right, so let's say that. Right. It's enough now. It's enough. Say so now we can get a geography of this camp. And you can see the way they travel. And the key, as he says, is that the souls pick up pick up the nature through which they through which they move or they abide. So that's why we need to know. about these rivers. Now, the rules for the rivers are, are very interesting because it's like you have to establish communication. You have to establish communication. As you go by the lake there, the Atchurian lake, the Artrusian lake, the communication. The communication has to be accepted. So that See, if we go to the next level, if we go to the next level, we can predicate the same kinds of things on a higher level. I mean, instead of water, air, on a higher level, ether. Prevail on the gods. That's right. Yeah. Because, that's what he says, because the guide that takes them, these are the people without guides. That have guides or without guides? Without guides. Uh, now, with guides, they get two things, right? And they, they gain understanding, don't they? you remember that saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, they gain understanding. Yeah. See, with the gods, they really dwell. And they have intercourse with the gods by speech, prophecies, and visions. Past, is, past through life in purity and righteousness finds gods for companions and guides and goes to dwell in his proper home. Uh, on the preceding page, I mean. Uh, Now the orderly wise soul follows its guide and understands its circumstances. Yeah, that quote? Yeah, quite agree. That was it? Yeah. 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 But the soul that is desirous of the body, as I said before, flits about it. And it is a world for a long time. And after much resistance, many sufferings, is led away with violence and difficulty by its appointed genus. Good morning. When it arrives at the place where the other souls are, the soul which is impure and has done wrong, 
by committing wicked murders and other deeds akin to those and the works of kindred souls, is avoided and shunned by all, and no one is willing to be its companion or its guide, but it wanders about alone in utter bewilderment during certain fixed times, after which it is carried by necessity to its fitting habitation. For the soul is passed through life in purity and righteousness, finding gods for companions and guides, and goes to dwell in its proper dwelling. Now the many wonderful regions of the earth, and the earth itself, is is neither in size nor in other respects such as is opposed by those who habitually discourse about it, as I believe on someone's authority. Let me get you one away. Really, there seem to be many forks of the road and many windings. This I infer from the rites and ceremonies practiced here on earth. Now, the orderly and wise soul follows its guide and understands its circumstances. So, it follows its guide. So, it isn't here. It doesn't follow its guide. This is a this is a structure, therefore we have to get into this higher region, right? This as well as this. And now we have some of the information for this. We have very little for this. But we can infer that because we have what we have. Right? The old principle of extending an analogy. So I would say do the work next time. Okay. Right. That help? Okay. Were we going to get a map from you, Sierra Oh, I You were going to go out of the closet? I'm about to. <laughs> in the faucet, you probably had one of these in the wall, no. wasn't it? Oh. oh. It worked it all out. <laughs> so. right, so go ahead. And with it, they have a uh, tantra system. <laughs> Right. And the <laughs> systems and Sufi systems. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. And Buddhist. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, right. The Institute of Higher Learning. Journey of the Soul they and all of that. Yeah. They can just relate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. well, they did the purple robes and purple candles. Yeah. Burn yeah. sandalwood. <laughs> Chant. <laughs> Practice it. Give one more shot then? Sure. Next time? Okay. Well, I have okay. an announcement for anybody to use. Um, speaking for Sandy Halpin. Mm -hmm. Says she has to know by um, this weekend how many people are going to go to the seminar on the possibly the 12th, but the 13th and 14th on the seminar dates. People are going to go up Friday night. And go up Friday night. So, would you let me know? Or is there more to that, Mr. Uh, yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Mr. Friday. Which part? <laughs> well, I was walking across the campus. Oh, okay. Today, but but Sandy and Sandy, Sandy said, said, by the way. On Friday night. The Basque. There's a Basque restaurant in. Oh, there's several, but yes, in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. And it's about 30 minutes. It makes the trip about 30 minutes longer. Yeah. Cool. But the restaurants are really. C'est la vie. And they're like eating in a, a, a soup kitchen, and it's served family style. And uh, it's just a fun place. You know, just really fun. You, the, uh, and it's all vegetarian. Yeah, yeah if you like tongue and also. <laughs> but it is, it's, you know, it's just an interesting fun, fun to it. Sounds nice. But it is, uh, you walk in, and the first time we went, we went with a couple of our contractor friends, and they were accustomed to some pretty rowdy, raucous bars, but they walked into this place and went back to back immediately. Because you've got the shepherds <laughs> in there and the cowboys, and I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's not rough or rowdy, but it, if you're looking for a fight, you'll get it. There. Yeah, yeah, you'll get it. Yeah. But there, we're always fun. glad to accommodate. And the food is good. The food is good. Yeah. So the um, 
seminar um, itself will start on Saturday and, and you know go up on Friday night for the for the bass restaurant in Caravan Paul Sanders or I'll have a map for you on Friday or if you're not here on Friday, sometimes you're not here. What are the accommodations of this? What kind of accommodations here? What do we need? Tents? Hi. Room in the house? Uh we can oh. sleep. Uh -huh. We can sleep in the house. Six. Six in bed, not counting Bill and I, Kevin, that's only about that. Seven, including the couch. And then there's room for sleeping bags in the living room and dining room. And I would say that comfortably, ten people over and up above Bill and I and Kevin could sleep in the house. Then there's a good sized porch on the front of the house with an overhang yeah. that three mm -hmm. people could sleep on in sleeping bags. God knows there's plenty of ground for tents. Uh, we have a. Uh, it's going to be a Rodeo because we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> she has some cattle there. Motor, mm -hmm. motor home that will sleep too comfortably. That will, you know, take up a van. I mean, a van. I don't know who else has vehicles that will sleep people. Oh, great. Well, if, I think if there's a piece of ground, you know, all you got to do is roll out a blanket, you know. Yeah. Keep well, it's one of your backyard, but you out there every home. Oh, we slept out there a lot. Yeah. Yeah? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. There's no one sleeping outside. Arizona's a place to sleep outside, but you know it's not going to rain on you. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, how are we going to handle it? Is each person going to bring their food, or are we going to chip in, or? Why don't we find out, wait until CC how many people want to do it, okay. and then get a committee to pick it up from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I'd rather chip in and have somebody fix it for me. Oh, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, I, I think the men are going to work. I'll be the loading the tank. What do you think? Oh, I'm going to fix one, it. One meal. I don't want, I like breakfast. I, I like Listen, to cook breakfast. Listen, the men are signing up for this hitch. You and Pierre and... We've done that before. <laughs> sure. We've done that. Bill's going to do it. Oh, well. Ken, are you going to cook? No, that was just Mike Jurgen. No, sounds good. We all had kitchen tours. I watched uh, this. Uh, uh, and and ate hamburgers. I do. I do have one thing I do want to tell you, though, Carol. If I'm there, I'll say. said, Sandy, do you guys have a freezer? And I said, yes, it's, you know, an upright. And the man agrees with She said, well, is it full? I said, and the reason that it's empty is because it's always a surprise when we go up there because you never really know if you're going to have hot if the phone's going to work or if you have electricity. Yeah. About the only thing you can count on is that we do have wood for the fireplace. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But okay. on, you know, what has happened? <laughs> what <you> <laughs> You never know. Yeah, no, it's, it's just a part Box of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you go up and everything works, you really, I mean, praise you, the Lord and pass the brand. Yeah, you really, no joke, you almost want to get drunk. You know, you're so happy. And if it doesn't, you want to get drunk. Yeah, because you're like, oh, God, no. Either way, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's having all the bases covered. Yeah. Let's see. That's right. 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 That's